I completely upended my life and moved from Moscow to Oxford alone. New city, new people, new school. Essentially a new life where nobody knows me as I was and they only know me as I am now. Of course, I still keep in touch with the people I met in Moscow. Those experiences shaped me as a person and I hold those memories deep in my heart. It's, it's unfair to say that I am changing my entire personality but it's definitely a clean slate in that the new people I'm meeting, they don't know me and my mistakes from the past. They don't know me as who I used to be. They only know me in the present. And that is both terrifying and liberating. Terrifying because I miss my parents and my brother. Even though I call them every day, three times a day, even though we talk so much, I still miss them and I miss my friends. But it's also liberating in that I know that I can do away with all those mistakes and things I regret doing and start and not repeat those mistakes and start and be the person that I wanted to be rather than change the person who I was and who everyone was used to. I know it's a little bit corny, but it's true. The moment you leave your parents, your family home, the place where you grew up with, the place where you were surrounded by people you love in a cozy, comfortable environment, things change. And I can tell that because I've been living and boarding here for a month and it's very different. And since you asked, I wanted to talk a little bit about that today and do this moving in vlog. I know it's not my usual bookish content, but I hope I won't bore you and let's talk a little bit about my life. <laughs> Pretty much all my life, except for 2012 to mid-2014, when I went to the UK to study briefly and to practice my English, I've been living in Moscow, in the same city, actually in the same apartment, and going to the same school. I can say this now since it's no longer an issue of your safety, but I used to go to the International School of Moscow. I mean, you probably knew that already because there's not that many international schools in Moscow, but I only left now in year 11 after I finished my GCSEs and I joined that school in year 4. So for 7 years I talked with the same people on a day-to-day -day basis. I knew all my teachers, I knew all my classmates, I knew their personalities and we ate together. We went from energetic kids who had so much hope and optimism for the future to a bunch of teenagers who don't want to be taking GCSE biology. I lived in routine for all these years. Even in the UK, I lived in routine. Routine was always something that I built around myself and my parents helped me to build around myself. I mean, I went to school where, again, I talked with those very same people that I have talked with since I could remember. And then I came home and I had lunch and dinner because I, I would eat at four and then I would do my homework and then I would go on to my various clubs, to my language clubs, to my piano, to tennis, constant, constant cycle of running somewhere and doing something and coming back home and going to bed and doing the exact same thing over and over again. And I always thought that it would be that way, that this is what my life is like. I mean, even when I get a job, I thought that it would be this way, except for I wouldn't get validation from good grades and I would get paid. <laughs> and then I would also have to pay taxes. I was so adjusted to the schedule. I, I, I mean, I wasn't thinking in terms of Tuesday is a Tuesday. I was thinking in terms of Tuesday is the day I have my math lesson and Mondays and Fridays at six o'clock I have tennis. And my mind and my body were very finely adjusted to that rhythm. I wanted to just get things done and I was comfortable in that routine. And then we moved apartments and my environment changed. And then after that, my baby brother was born. And as a kid, I never really wanted a sibling. I was fine just being an only child. And also I was super selfish. <laughs> but then my brother was born and I realized how much I loved him and how much I wanted to be there for him. And it was a great change in my life. And I felt a lot happier since then. Since 2019, I felt much happier knowing that I wasn't alone in this big, scary adult world. And then COVID started. So... These few years have been years of change, sometimes incremental, sometimes all at once, and it's been good, and it's been bad, but mostly it has just been life. And you can always adjust your expectations, so that's what I did. And I applied last year, or beginning of this year to be exact, 
I don't know, to be honest, it's been a while, it's been hectic, I can't think right now. I applied to the top two most prestigious schools in the UK, and it was just a leap of faith. Like, I didn't expect to get in. Who wants to take a random girl who's good at English, she has good grades, sure, but like she lives in Moscow, and how can you know that she'll contribute to their school environment? I wanted to get in. I wanted that change in my life. I wanted to push myself because these prestigious schools, I mean, they have really intensive schedules and they push you to do better and to do better. And I wanted to do that to, imp to improve myself as a person. But I also figured if I don't get in, I'm living with my parents who I love very much. I'm living with my brother. I have my friends around me. I have an environment I'm comfortable in. So even if I don't get in, it's not the end of the world. And then I got into both. And that came as something of a surprise and something of a not surprise in that a part of me was like, well, if you're applying, then you kind of expect that it's not pointless. For safety reasons, I won't say the school I'm going to, but it's here in Oxford, you could probably figure it out, but then please don't stalk me, like, you know, whatever. So I was counting the days until I move here to where I am now in my dorm. I was marking the days off on the calendar because I knew that I had to prepare and to pack and to like figure out where I can fit the most things in so I can get them done before I leave and then say goodbye to everyone. And then suddenly it was the day when I was leaving and I realized that I was scared. People that I thought I wasn't close with, people that we weren't really friends with but nevertheless people I grew up with, I realized that I'd miss them even if we had one conversation over the past year. Especially Irina. Irina is somebody you know from this channel because we filmed quite a lot before and she's my closest friend. And we have all these memories together of late night karaoke. Someone <laughs> Songs have like really long introductions for yeah. some reason. I always get confused with that. <laughs> My phone says first part of a kiss me, somebody tells me I think they're okay. If they don't give me proper credit, I just walk away. They can beg and they can plead, but they can't see the light. Cause the boy with the cold hard cash is always Mr. Right Cause we are living in a material world And I am a material world You know that we are living in a material world And I am a material girl he set off the school fire alarm in chemistry once by accident because we were burning magnesium and the fire alarm was not switched off and we kind of let it smoke and we didn't realize. We've been through a lot and that final week that I was leaving, the day before I was supposed to leave, we went out one last time and we went to the botanical gardens and we went to a flea market and I bought this ring by the way, <laughs> if you've been seeing it. But it was such a bittersweet day because I realized that of course we're calling, of course we're texting, of course we're sending messages, but it's not the same as knowing that if something happens, I can call my friend and I can take the metro and I can be in her house in, in 30 minutes. Russia has no direct flights anymore. I think you know why if you've been following the news. really worried about how people would react given that I'm Russian and the whole geopolitical situation right now. And you know, I was really worried about that. And actually it turned out to be empty worries because my school is mostly Asian like me. So nobody really cared and everyone was really nice. And I so, so, so appreciate that because it was just a huge weight off my chest. But anyways, back to the point of no direct flights. Because there's no direct flights to the UK, I had to fly through Turkey. And I haven't flown anywhere because we haven't taken a holiday since the pandemic started. And I haven't ever flown alone. So here I was about to fly alone for the first time in literally years, not remembering how the airport even works. And I was terrified. I started having nightmares. 
of because I because Russian cards don't work anymore I was carrying a little bit of cash with me for the flight in case something happened I had dreams where I was being robbed in the airport I oh my god this sounds so paranoid right now but I was literally thinking of how I can sue 20 pounds into into my clothes or something like stuff them stuff them down there you know just anything to like have that money with me and my hair started falling out from the stress I don't know maybe it was stress from other things but I, I I feel like I lost a lot of hair and my mom said why don't we go for a holiday and then we can help you once you're in Turkey because we'll set you on that flight and I am so happy that she made that suggestion I realized that they probably didn't want a holiday they just came along for the sake of me but I am so happy that she suggested that because flying alone in the airport was horrifying like when I arrived in Stansted airport I didn't know where to go so I just kind of followed the crowd and it worked out and I kid you not this year's trip to Turkey I was so happy that my mom suggested it and of course so fortunate that we got to go on that trip because it was one of the best trips of my life I spent every day swimming hanging out with my brother, spending time with my family, playing volleyball for three to four hours a day in the sun. I got so toned. I was like athletic, you know, muscles. <laughs> you, can't see, you can't even see them in the sweater, but you know, I got really athletic. I got a tan. I felt really healthy. And for the first time ever, I wasn't stressed at all. Like this trip distracted me from everything and I could fully relax. And when I it, when it actually came time for me to fly, I actually had a clear mind and I was ready and prepared for it. And actually, Turkey was a great experience also psychologically and in terms of personal development. And that's a strange thing perhaps to say, but I started pushing my boundaries just a little bit every day in Turkey. For example, with volleyball, I'm kind of shy when it comes to meeting new people. Like, I can't meet new people and I always want to meet new people. But then when it gets to the situation, I'm always a bit awkward and concerned about how they perceive me. And so I, when I went to play volleyball, I was terrified. I was literally shaking. My hands, everything was shaking because they were mostly adults and I was the only teenager. And at first it was really awkward for me, but then I got used to it and it became the highlight of my day. Like every day I would wake up, go for two hours in the morning, go for two hours in the evening. Like I even made friends. It was really nice. And I also met Alif, who is one of my bookster friends. And we've been talking pretty much since I started my bookstagram account. But of course, meeting like online friends in real life is a little bit stressful. It was also a step out of my comfort zone. Meeting new people terrifies me. I'll start in Turkey. And then if you're still scared, great, because here's 140 new people because there's 140 people taking A-levels at my school. So here's 140 new people for you to meet. Oh, um, your whole entire life you've just been taking the car in Moscow because it's too big of a city and it's too intimidating for you to walk? Well, here you get to walk everywhere because even if you want to get a car because it's too far away, taxis here cost like your left kidney. So I walked around everywhere. I did that all of the streets, all of the side streets. I explored everything from morning. As soon as I woke up, I called my parents. I got dressed. I went out and I came back late evening. I ate dinner and I came back. Honestly. I fell in love with the city. I've been here a month and I can't believe that this incredible place is my home. I want to show you all the architecture, all the things I filmed. So let's just take a moment of silence and appreciate it and listen to some nice music.
conditions are great here. I realized that these are amazing, incredible living conditions and I really appreciate it. Like it's smaller than the room I had back in my at my house because I had a treadmill and a piano in my room and giant bookshelves so yeah it's it's feeling a little empty it's feeling a little bit cardboard boxy student just moves in like I haven't lived here except for the photos vibes but it's a great room but honestly I felt overwhelmed at first this was something that you guys asked a lot and yes I absolutely panicked about cleaning because cleaning the floors cleaning the bathroom, doing the laundry, doing the ironing for the laundry when I don't even have an ironing board because Amazon lost it somewhere. Laundry, laundry which you have to pay five pounds for, three pounds for the washer and two pounds for the dryer. I'm sorry, but British people, this is actually a scam. You are scamming people without a washing machine. I started obsessively cleaning everything, but actually I really got used to the rhythm and now it's actually really fun to clean. I hated cleaning back at my house, but here there's there's only so many shelves. I, I quickly dust everything. I um I wash the floors, I do everything. It takes me about an hour. There's a kitchen here too, which is great. Actually, I mean I like the school food. Uh, like it could be a lot worse. <laughs> it's definitely better than my previous school. So um, it's not like I have to cook for myself every day, but on the weekends I do mostly cook for myself. And I actually made pinmani with my friends on Monday this week and it was so much fun. I am so grateful to my friends because friends, genuinely, moral of the story, they make everything so much better. When I walked into my kitchen, my kitchen was a mess. It was a murder site. There was a red stain in the sink. It would not go away. Even if you like open the tap and let the water run, no, you had to like properly scrub at it. There were crumbs. The window was open. There were flies next to the crumbs my neighbors were leaving trash in the kitchen and i got angry and i took out all the trash and i left a note saying if you leave trash you are trash i got angry <laughs> and yeah it, it, it was a little bit of a mean note but i definitely overreacted because the kitchen was horrifying but my friends came over to help and i am so grateful and we had a lot of fun and now the kitchen looks presentable and yeah, I, I mean, everything just kind of sorted itself out and now I love living in the storm even more. As much as I love living here, I wanted this to be a very honest experience. So there's a couple of issues. My old issue, it's for safety reasons, but the check-ins. So we have to be home by 10 p.m. That's fine. I'm not going out into the dark at 9.30 p.m. It's called paranoid and being a girl living alone. <laughs> but um, I don't like that the checks are at 10. Actually, they start from 10 and they knock on your door. And the thing is, if I want to go to bed earlier than 10, I really can't because I have to wait for them to like check that I'm alive and then say, hi, I'm here. So I kind of get tired and I want to go to bed, but then I have to wait for them to check or like sometimes I'll just fall asleep and then they'll knock and they'll wake me up. So it's a mild issue, but it's a little bit of an issue. Moscow is two hours ahead and considering that my parents and my language tutors are mostly still in Moscow, I it's very hard for me to arrange lessons. Either I have to wake up really early to have an early lesson in Moscow or I have to rush the moment that school ends to get back home so that we can have a lesson when it's not too late in Moscow. So that's a little bit stressful. Finally, the cost of everything. This isn't like a dorm issue. This is an England issue. I am so sorry to complain, but why is everything so expensive here? I went to H&M the other day and I was looking for a cardigan because it's really cold. Oh my God, the teachers here, they want 19 degrees for the, for the like temperature of the room. No, that's so cold. In Russia, most people have it at 21, 20 to 22. 19 is, I, I sit there and I'm freezing. So I wanted to go and get a cardigan and I went into H&L and the cardigan quality was so bad. It was, it was so bad. It, lo it looked like it was just a, a garbage bag and they just kind of like sewed it together. It was very bad quality and it cost 24 pounds. In Russia, the clothes at H&L even with the same quality or even with better quality, they do not cost more than the eight pound equivalent in rubles. Bubble tea here is five times more expensive. And that's a problem because I kind of have an addiction and I really want to have bubble tea at least one time per week. So I save money to go and get it and it's so expensive. So I was thinking I'll start making my own bubble tea or something because it's too much. Don't get me started on the cost of towels. 
and cutlery and everything else here and i started buying everything in bulk because it's cheaper that way like also in the summer i have to move out so i don't know what to do about that but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it another thing the books so it's really magical to go to a bookstore here because the selection is so much bigger than in moscow actually the very first weekend that i arrived i went to a bookstore straight away i piled up the books that i wanted to get and then I looked at the price and I put all of them back and figured I'll just go to the library. Actually, I already have a library card, so that's great. But books here are insanely expensive. Again, maybe like two times, three times more expensive than in Moscow. And the price on textbooks here, are you really charging 50 pounds for a textbook? I mean, if I'm paying 50 pounds, there better be golden edges. <laughs> okay. Final complaints and then I'll talk about the good things some more. I mean, I just wanted this to be an honest conversation, so here it goes, the healthcare system. So I assume that if I get sick, I'm just gonna die here because hospitals close at 5.30pm and I don't think I can schedule my illness to be before 5.30pm. So I guess if I get sick at 9 o'clock, I'm just gonna die. Or I have to wait all the way until 9 in the morning. So I think by that time I'll either be dead or cured and there won't be a problem, which is exactly what they're hoping for. So um, I said to myself, I just won't be sick. And then I got COVID, so, so that didn't work out, so here's to hoping my immunity system is stronger now. And the second issue, uh, same thing with the shops, so I guess that if I'm hungry, I better not be hungry after 7.30pm. And that's honestly such a huge shock for me, because most shops in, Mo uh, in Moscow are open until 11pm, hospitals are open 24-7, and you can order an ambulance and it won't cost you the your entire life savings. So that is a very bad negative of living here in the uk my other issue and this is a personal issue is that most places don't accept cash and i currently don't have a card so it's a little bit tough when i go out with my friends because they have to pay for everything and then i give them back the money in cash and they don't mind doing it but i feel really awkward about it but I know I said a lot of bad things, but there's so many good things too. I love that I meet new people every day. And I love that I can go on walks and enjoy this beautiful architecture for free. And I love that I can go on walks because the weather is nice. And I love that nobody stares at me when I speak in a language other than English because Oxford is such a diverse place. And I love the little markets and little shops and little stalls that are everywhere around Oxford. I went to this Korean place and I I had such a wholesome conversation with the Korean lady in Korean because obviously my dad is Korean and it was just such a nice thing and everybody here is genuinely so friendly and it makes my heart sing and actually love people and not mind going out and being in social situations. I love that they accept volunteers here and I signed up for two charities. One is a charity that helps elderly people and one is a charity that helps less fortunate uh, kids get an education. So I am so excited to get involved with that because in Russia you can't really help out unless you're 18. You can't even get a job unless you're 18. So there's just more opportunities here. I also adore the historical nature of Oxford and I can't get enough of all the universities, all the places, all the culture. I mean, it's insane. During Open Doors, I visited the same university that Alexander II stayed in, the same university Tolkien taught in. I visited the Bodleian libraries, no photo sadly and I I saw books that were 600 years old I saw the original dictionary that took Samuel 40 years to write I I heard that they have the original Frankenstein text there I mean it was incredible to be surrounded by so much history to walk these cobbled streets every day that generations of people before me have walked so there's the good and there's the bad but overall, I am so happy that I took this opportunity and that my parents helped me take this opportunity and they prepared me for this and that I'm here in Oxford. I hope you will continue to stick around as I will continue to read and to make bookish content both here and on Instagram. And I sincerely hope you enjoyed this vlog, even though it wasn't my usual bookish content. Also, if you have any tips for living alone, managing those household chores or cooking, please do let me know because I mean, it's a first time and do share your experiences. So thank you so much for watching this video and see you soon.